I'm a real trader. I really trade. I trade practically every day, but I'm not a day trader. I made my first trade in the summer of 1967. That's right, 1967. That makes me an old guy. It took me 15 years to learn that what I was doing in trading was wrong, dead wrong. So I changed, did a lot of research, did a lot of trading. I've written 45 books on trading, presented over 850 webinars and seminars all over the world. Price was talking about Wells Wilder. The good news about becoming old like me is you're able to say, Wells Wilder was a friend of mine. We in fact presented a live trading seminar in Hong Kong in the 1980s. So I'm very familiar with Wells Wilder's work and the great things that he did and sad to announce his passing away a few weeks ago in New Zealand. One of the things that Wells talked about was the RSI Relative Strength Index, which is very similar to what I'm gonna be talking about today, stochastic. But before I do that, the legally required disclaimer right over here. You've seen it a hundred times at least. But most important of all, I want to talk to you about stochastics. Dr. George Lane, also a friend of mine, so-called father of stochastics. In 1983, George told me, Jake, thanks for teaching me your stochastic pop variation. It's the most interesting and valuable twist. When it works, I call it the pop. When it fails, I call it the poop. I wanna to talk to you about something very specific today. I wanna to be focused because the most important thing you can do as a trader is to have focus, to have clarity, and to have specific, unambiguous rules about trading. So everything I do is, as it says at the bottom of the screen, fact, back, and rules-based. If I can't see it, if I can't put a number on it, if I can't express it as an algorithm, as a rule, I can't use it. And my first advice to anyone who is just beginning to trade with their stimulus check, besides don't do it, is make sure you know what you're doing by knowing the facts. Never trade based on what you think you know or what you interpret. Always, based, always trade based on what you do know. Now that's a double-edged sword because many of the things we think we know about trading, we really don't know. And even the things that we do know, we're not, we don't know for sure. So it's very important to remember, you must know the facts. I do not use certain terms in my trading because they have caused me to take losses. Terms like, looks like, as in, looks like the market wants to go higher. What the hell does that mean? How does the market know what it wants to do? Terms like a relative low, a relative high, terms like overbought, oversold, they are meaningless to me unless I can express them as numbers. So if I were to share with you, the most important thing that I've learned about trading is this. Numbers is everything. Numbers is what trading is all about. If you don't know the numbers, you don't make the trade. The good news about COVID is that it's put a lot of money into people's pockets that they didn't have before. Whether you're in the drug industry or whether you're a trader, you got your stimulus check. That stimulus check will probably go to a Robin Hood account or probably has already gone there and it's probably already disappeared. So my goal today, rather than sell you anything, rather than talk to you about 997 or 497 or anything like that is this. I wanna teach you something. I wanna teach you something you can really use so that you can come back to me and say, Jake, you taught me something. You gave something back to an industry that has given you an opportunity to become wealthy. So we're gonna talk about stochastics. We're going to focus. In trading, you don't wanna be a jack of all trades. You wanna be a master of one or two trades, by which I mean, Specialize, learn those things that work, look at the numbers, look at the statistics, and if they're not fully objective, don't use them. If you can take 10 people, teach them each a concept and a procedure and a number and a methodology and rules, and then give them an assignment. Look at this chart, look at this trade, 
independent of each other and tell me your conclusion. If I can't get 10 out of 10 agreement on what the chart says, then I know either of two things. Either the people who learned the method have a learning disability or my methods are not specific enough, not clear enough, not rule-based enough to allow people an opportunity to reach the same conclusion. So for example, Elliot Wave, I love Robert Prechter, he's a great guy. I love the concept of the Elliott Wave, but I can't use it because it's not objective and not structurally clear to me. So when we talk about stochastics, we wanna know what it is, we wanna know how to use it, we wanna know exactly the proper way to use it, by which I mean the way to use it in order to make money. Because this is all about making money. Let's be mercenary about it. It's all about making money. If the tools aren't making you money, you're wasting your time. And the most precious thing you've got is time. Don't waste it. So most people don't know stochastics in terms of what it is, how to use it correctly. And they use it as a so-called overbought, oversold indicator. Today I'm going to show you a specific methodology that you can use on your own to determine entry and exit for short-term trading, intermediate-term trading, or long-term trading, even day trading. So these days, if you want to find out the answer to something, or at least you want to try and find out the answer to something, you're going to go to the internet and you're going to say, what is stochastics? As I say over here, good luck, because you will get something like this. 45 million hits and all kinds of information that's unclear. What is it? How does it work? You won't get the answers. You'll get something like this. 80 and 20 are the most common levels used. It works pretty well, but usually, what does better mean? These are all words for which I have no use. I'm gonna go back a few slides and show you something else. Trading is all about patterns. There are many different patterns in the markets. In order to find successful trading methodologies, you need to find successful patterns. How do you do that? We've got computers. So for example, we can look at a big picture, long-term pattern in the Japanese yen futures versus the US dollar, the big picture cycle. And you can see the cycle has been very repetitive, not perfect. It's run about seven years from low to low. And it gives us an opportunity, combined with other patterns, like small trader sentiment and commitment of traders, commercial buying, and so forth, to determine the big moves. You put the pattern together with timing, and you've got a methodology that's clear, and it's very specific so that it can be used by anyone if they know the rules. You've got patterns in every market. So, for example, euro-dollar interest rate futures. The five-year pattern, almost perfect in predicting the lows and the highs, but not 100%. Because these patterns are not 100%, we need to use a trigger with a with the methodology. So we use a timing trigger combined with a pattern, and that gives us a trade, which we then manage with risk, and we manage with profit-maximizing strategies. So we have patterns in financials. Here is one of the biggest moves in soybean oil happening right now. And there is the big picture pattern in blue. The interesting thing about, about this methodology is this. There's more than just one pattern that works. There are many different patterns. Our job as traders is to find through research and computer, techno, te computer testing patterns that work. The definition of patterns that work is they make money. The bad news about patterns or anything else that I can teach you today or anything else that anybody can teach you today is this. If you don't understand the rules, you're gonna lose money. If you lose money, you're gonna blame it on somebody else except yourself, and that's not acceptable to me. So, stochastic. I said earlier that stochastic is similar to RSI. If you understand stochastic, and you ask 10 people what it is, you're gonna get five or 10 different answers. That doesn't work for me. So we're gonna look at the best input indicators for stochastic. 
I'm going to show you the pop, how to use it. And we're going to talk about thinking outside the box. So consider the following situation. Overbought and oversold. Excuse me, what the hell does that mean? Was GameStop overbought at 10? Was it overbought at 30? Was it overbought at 300? Was it overbought at 400? What does overbought mean? Is a stock at $10 a share oversold? And then it goes to $5 a share. Is it more oversold? Then it goes to $3 a share. Is it oversolder? What is it? There's no specific definition of overbought or oversold, but traders use it all the time. Watch CNBC for a few hours, and you're going to get a dose of overbought. And by the way, I've been on CNBC. I know exactly how that show works. I've been on Wall Street Week. I know how all those shows work. They're primarily for advertising. But the bottom line is this. When we use stochastics, we have a specific rule definition, which I will show you today. And I don't want you to believe me. I want you to go and try and use it yourself. In September, Stocks and Commodities Magazine, September 2020, interviewed me and asked me 37 questions. One of the questions was, you've now been trading for over 53 years. What are the key three lessons you've learned? Let me give you my answers. One, say what you mean and mean what you say, by which I mean this. Don't look at a chart and say, I think it's going to go higher. Look at a chart and say, is there a trading opportunity here for me? And if so, where is it? And if so, what is it? When to get in, when to get out, how much to risk? Second thing that I learned, never interpret anything when it comes to trading. There is no looks like. It's all binary. There's a buying opportunity, there's a selling opportunity, or there's nothing. There's a stop, or there's no stop. There's a specific stop, there's a dollar stop, or there's a indicator stop. It's all specific. And number three, don't believe anything anyone tells you unless you see it for yourself. And that includes what I'm showing you today. What I would like you to do is this. Send me an email. If you've used my work and it's working for you, send me an email. I'd like to know what happened. If you're not successful, tell me why you're not successful. I'd like to know what it is you're doing wrong. Because what I'm going to show you today works if you use it right. The good news is I can teach you things that work and they're very specific. The bad news is I have no control over what you do with that when you get out of here. The problem is people get too much information. You probably noticed from my charts I don't use candlesticks. Why? They give me too much information. I want more valid information. I just want a few things that are good and clear. I don't want anything. Sorry about that. I don't want anything that's unclear. So let's get some clarity here. If you go to the definitions of stochastic, you're going to find all kinds of things like this. I'm not going to do this right now. You can come back and read this later. I want to get to the real meat of the things. So if you ask the computer, what is overbought? The definition you'll get is overvalued owing to excessive buying at unjustifiably high price, unjustifiably high prices. That's ridiculous. What's unjustifiably high? Who's the justification for that? What does excessive buying mean? A healthy correction to an overbought market. What is a healthy correction? Yes, six people, you get six different answers. So how do you know if a stock is overbought? You don't because you need to know specifically what to do with that condition. So people will tell you, if RSI is over 70, it's overbought. If his RSI is under 30, it's oversold. Don't believe that. Let's do this. Let's go to a chart like so. The process I'm going to teach you today is based on my trading model called setup trigger follow through. Every trade has a setup. But let's put it this way. If you want to make money, you will make sure that every trade you use has a setup. The setup is a pattern. I don't care if it's a head and shoulders. I don't care if it's a flag or a pennant, support, resistance, a support line, a trend line, whatever. The first thing you need to do is make sure that the pattern you're looking at is profitable. How do you do that? Put it on a computer. If you can't put it on a computer because it can't be expressed in numbers, then it's not valid, it's not an algorithm, and it won't work. Over 90% of the trading these days is done by institutions. How do they do it? 
They do it by computer. Why do they do it by a computer? Because computers understand rules. If you don't have rules, you've got nothing. You may be making money on intuition right now, but it's not going to last. So the setup is important. Every setup has to have a trigger. I will show that to you. Every trigger has to have a follow through, which consists of two parts. Follow through number one, the stop loss. Where are you going to be wrong? Determining the stop loss is the most important thing you can do. People will call me up and they'll say, hey, Jay, guess what? I bought gold today. I said, oh, you bought gold. How nice. What did you do it for? Why did you do it? Well, I bought it because there was a reversal in the trend. Okay, no problem. So how much are you going to risk? I'm going to risk $500. $500? Where did that number come from? Um, I'm going to risk $500 because I've got a small account and that's all I can afford to risk. So you're going to make your risk determination not based on the volatility of the market, not based on the fact that the market has specific rules and specific volatility during the day, not based on the range of the day, but on what you can afford to risk. The market doesn't give a goddamn about what you can afford to risk. If you're going to risk $500 in a futures market that's moving in a range of $2,500 a day from high to low, you're going to lose every time. So the risk has to be proportionate to the methodology and it has to be objective. The most important part of part three is this, the profit maximizing strategy. If you don't have a way of turning that $200 profit into a $2,000 profit, even though you will get stopped out 80% of the time at break even, the 20% of the time that you make money will be your bread and butter. That's gonna push you over the top. That's what's gonna make you money. 80% of your money is going to be made on 20% of your trades, which means the 20% that you get has to be really big. And there's ways to do that with a profit maximizing strategy. I'll show you one of those today. Let's go for, forward. Let's look at this chart. Here's a chart with stochastic. Very simple. Price on the top, stochastic on the bottom. Stochastic consists of two lines. The blue line and the red line. The blue line is called percent K and the red line is called percent D. So the red line is a moving average of the blue line. Many people like to trade stochastic the following way. Go short over here, go long over here. Go short and long and short and long and short and long over here. They short, go long over here. So every time the stochastics crosses, they like to buy and sell. Over here, they get what's called whipsawed. Numerous trades back and forth at a loss. And the same over here, and the same over here. And even the same over here. So the way to use stochastic, and there's at least four ways. I'm gonna show you four of them and tell you why three of them are not very, actually why two of them are not very effective. So let me show you something else, just a little food for thought. If it's true that over here, the market is quote, overbought and here it's oversold and it starts to get overbought over here and you're looking at it and it keeps getting higher and you're saying well it's more overbought now it's overboughter now it's the overboughtest right over here so what's happening what's happening is very simple and it's the problem with rsi and stochastic or any overbought oversold indicator Stochastic has a theoretical limit of 100. It can only go to 99.9999999999 and it can't go any higher. Price has no limit on the upside. So it's possible for price to go, for stochastic to get really high, by which I mean above 75, and for price to keep on going up. And all this time people are saying, I can't buy it now, it's too overbought. I can't buy it now, it's more overbought. I can't buy it here, it's overbought. They sit back and they watch the market keep going higher and higher and higher, and they're not making any money and they're frustrated. So how do people use stochastic? Let me go to another chart. If I was gonna give you some food for thought, let me come back. Let me ask you a what if question. What if you did the opposite of what people do? By which I mean, 
What if you bought the market when it was overbought and sold it short when it was oversold? What a concept. You buy it when it's overbought, you have a rule for buying it, you have a rule for getting out, and you participate in this move over here. Well, let me tell you something. I said earlier in the session today, always trade on the basis of what you know and what you don't know is not important. Don't do it. If you're trading on the basis of what you know, what do we know about overbought, unquote? What do we know about big moves? The tail end of a move is usually the biggest. Markets explode because people cover shorts and have a FOMO, what's called fear of missing out, and they buy like crazy. The lower part of a move, the bottom, is usually preceded by panic liquidation and very frequently encompasses the biggest part of the move down. So put it in your mind for just a few minutes and we'll get there. Buy when it's overbought, sell when it's oversold, buy when it's overbought. But in order to do that, you need some rules. I'm gonna give you those rules and we're gonna look at specific examples. So here's another one. Go short when it's oversold. Definition of oversold, below 25% stochastic. So as I said before, stochastic moves from zero to 100. It can't move any higher than 99.99999. It can't move any lower than 0 0.00000001, et cetera. So what are you gonna do? You're not gonna buy and sell and buy and sell when they cross back and forth, which is what many traders do. You're not gonna go short over here and get out over here, even though it looks good. I'm gonna show you how to buy when it's overbought and sell when it's oversold and when to get out. It's a brilliant concept because you're taking advantage of the most important part of the move, which is the end of the move. But you have to be nimble in order to do it and you can do it in any time frame. Let me show you what I mean. There are at least four ways to use stochastic. The first one, which I just described to you, is called the simplistic moronic view. The under, over, and over, under, I'll show you that. The overbought and oversold, avoid that, and the stochastic pop, which I think you'll really like, at least I do, and I've enjoyed it tremendously through the years. So being objective, we're gonna set up our upper and lower boundaries on stochastic. Upper boundary 80%, lower boundary 20%. And by the way, you can experiment with different levels depending on your trading style. Some people like to use 70 and 30. Some people like to use 90 and 10. The higher the number on the top and the lower the number on the bottom, the fewer trades you will get. For me, these numbers I'm giving you are ideal, 80% and 20%. There are a number of different variables for stochastic, percent %K, percent %D, and so forth. My settings are 14 and 5 and a moving average of three. I'll show you what I mean. Let's go to a chart. Here's the typical stochastic chart. Traders will go short when stochastic has been above the higher level and goes under it, like here and here, or they'll buy when stochastic has been below the lower level and goes above it. That works quite quite well, but it's not perfect, nothing is. So again, let me review. Stochastic, both values go above 80% and come back down below it, you go short. What happens? It doesn't work. Both values go above 80%, both values come down below it, you go short about here, and you're right for just a little bit of time. Both values go below the lower boundary and come back above it, you go long, you're not making any money. So the problem is, it doesn't work really well, this traditional approach. Here's another one. Both values go above and come below, you go short. Both values come above and then below, you go short. Both values go below, then you go long, you're right for a little while, so again, I can show you countless examples where it works and it doesn't work. And all the good news is this, and the bad news is this, all of the good trades eventually are eaten up by the whipsaws, by the back and forth incorrect signals. So let's do this. Let's take a look at another chart, the bigger picture. 
Here is a classic example of what I mean by the overbought problem. Apple goes overbought right over here and stays overbought for days and days and days and days while Apple continues to go higher. Stochastics cross back and forth and back and forth and back and forth, giving you all sorts of trades that lose money. And by the time you get to the big move down over here, you're out of money or you're out of patience or you're out of your wits. That's the problem. So let me describe a better approach for you and show you again why you don't want to do it the traditional way. Here you go. More specific. It's called the over, under, and under, over method number two. As I said before, it can work, but you need to be very disciplined with it and you need to make sure that your numbers are clear. Don't look at the chart and say, it looks like it wants to go down. Wait for the trigger to happen, by which I mean wait for the numbers to actually complete the bar before you do anything. So an example again would be right over here. Both values go above the upper level and come down below it, right over here, and bingo, you're short right close to the top. You then need a follow through methodology, by which I mean a trailing stop. In this case, both values go below the lower boundary. You're waiting, you're waiting, you're waiting, and bingo, it goes long. Both values go above the upper boundary. You go short, and it goes down. So this is what I call the over, under, and under, over. Let me show you another chart. Example, right over here. The values are below, they go above right over here, you're a buyer. They go above, they go below right over here, you're a seller, and so forth. So this is a very simple over, under, under, over strategy. And remember, you can adjust the numbers, the upper boundary and the lower boundary, to give you more or less trades. But sooner or later, if you make the numbers too high on the top and too low on the bottom, you're not going to get very many trades. Let me show you a better way. I'm going to skip a couple of charts and show you a better, what I think is a much better way. Let me show you one more thing before we finish with that. I talked earlier about profit maximizing strategy. So let's talk about this one right over here. Both values go above the upper boundary and then come below it right over here. And by the way, this is binary. They're either both below or both above. There's no guesswork involved because you're looking at the numbers. Because this is so rule-based and algorithmic, you can even program the computer to do it for you, or by which I mean you can program the computer to tell you when this has actually happened and take action accordingly. So here's what happens. The move begins. You want a profit target. What's your profit target? I like to look at what's called a volatility target. I'm going to find the largest range trading bar in the previous 10 to the trigger. In other words, we triggered a short over here. I go back and I count the largest range bar, and it's this one right here. I take that bar and I subtract it from the entry price, which gives me my first target. I add it to the entry price, which gives me my stop. So the trade is moving along very nicely. And once I hit my, hit my target, I'm out of danger. I want a trailing stop. Here is a very effective trailing stop. For a short position, use a three-period simple moving average of the high. In other words, this blue line here represents the trailing stop. And if my position closes above my trailing stop as it did right over here, I'm out. So review the audio recording if you don't understand the stop completely. It's a very effective stop. For a long position, it's a three-period simple moving average of the low. So let's look at another opportunity right over here. A sell right over here on my method, but we'll come back to this momentarily. Right over here, it goes below. And right over here it goes above, and we get a very big move to the upside. We go above, we go below, get a very big move to the downside. So there's nothing wrong with this method, but it does not take advantage of the overbought, oversold condition. On this same chart, I showed you the other methodology, what I call the POP. 
In other words, stochastic gets quote unquote oversold by both values going below the lower boundary. You go short and when the lines cross over here, you exit or you exit on a trailing stop or at a profit target and the profit target was the largest range of R. If you're not understanding this because it's very difficult to teach this entirely in 30 minutes or 40 minutes, send me an email and I'll explain it to you further. But let's look at a few more examples. Here's, here we go. Stochastic, the old method, the over, under, under, over. Both values go above after being below. You're a buyer. You place a trailing stop right over here. It closes below the trailing stop and you're out. So if there's nothing else I can teach you today except for this trailing stop, I think you will have learned a lot. But let's go on to the next slide. In fact, let me do this. Let me skip all of these and go to the pop. So here's the pop method. It requires only one of the two indicators to go above the upper boundary, right over here. You are immediately a buyer. At what price? At the market. When the lines cross again, which is completely objective, totally binary, you are out. Small losing trade. Both stochastic values go below the upper boundary, and one of them comes back above it right over here. You're a buyer. Look what happens next. You get a big up move, which is a huge move in S&P futures. Then when the values cross, you're out, or you use the trailing stop that I showed you. Let's go to another one. You like the day trade? Here is the same methodology today on a 30 minute, on a 10 minute chart. Now let me back up for just one moment. I wrote the four best selling books on day trading for McGraw Hill. I will advise you very candidly, don't day trade. Everybody and their brother wants to day trade. When you day trade, especially S&P, you're competing with the biggest, the best, the fastest, most knowledgeable computers and traders in the world. It's going to be very hard for you to make money. You're going to sit in front of that stupid machine all day long, make a few hundred bucks and feel like you've accomplished something, and then you figure it out you could be working at McDonald's and making more money. Don't do it. There was a time for day trading. There may be a time for day trading again in the future but it is not now. Let me address one more question that no one asked. What about options? I'm not an options trader. I don't enjoy options. For me, they're too difficult and there are a lot of people around who do options much better than I do. The problem with me for, for options is this. Time is very important. Timing is critical. Option strategies are great. I don't have the knowledge the incentive or the time to look at options if I can make money this way. So I'd rather do it the simple way. So let me come back to this. It only takes one of the two stochastic numbers to go above the upper boundary. At that point in time, you are going to be a buyer at the market. You're going to stay long until the numbers cross and you're going to get out. It's that simple. If you don't want to do that, you can use the trailing stop that I suggested to you. Let's look at the other trade. And remember, this is a 10 minute chart. One more important fact. On a 10 minute chart, you're using the day session S&P. You're not using the 24 hour, 23 hour S&P, you're using the day session only. So you have to use the day session and not look at what's happened overnight because it will definitely drive your signals astray and make you lose money by incorrect trades. So these were the two trades today. Second trade right over here, the blue line, which is usually, which I think it's always the first one that's right to cross. You're going short at the market. Don't sit in front of the computer and try to figure out a better number to trade at. Just use what I call a GMI order, which means get me in. Go short. Find the largest range bar of the previous 10. That becomes your stop and your first target. If the first target is not hit, by the time you get your crossover over here, you're out. At what price? 
at the market. If you hit your first profit target, you can then use a trailing stop, three period moving average of the low. That's all there is to it. You'll notice for the rest of the day, no signals, only two trades. What about a different time frame? Let's go to the weekly. Weekly S&P. One moment, please. Weekly S&P. Buy trigger, follow through, lines cross, or your three period moving average of the low is penetrated on a closing basis, you're out. The next one, buy, cross, exit. And these are weekly charts. So we're talking, this is a weekly chart. So we're talking about a fairly big move here. How much time do I have left, Dave? Three minutes. Three minutes? I'm just getting started. Okay, look at another one. Bitcoin. You want to trade Bitcoin? Six hour chart would be what I recommend. Buy setup and trigger, lines cross. It's a small move for Bitcoin, but it's definitely worthwhile. So here's a few more. One of the biggest moves in the history of soybeans right over here. Daily bars, buy setup and trigger, you're out. It's a very quick method. That's why I call it the pop. There's a couple of others. There's the treasury bonds and so forth. So let me tell you this. I don't want to use up my three minutes too quickly. If there's anything I can teach you that's of value, it's fact back rules-based trading. If you're not a rules-based trader, you've got nothing. If you're not losing money now, you will lose money. So I'm, do I'm doing a webinar on cycles um, in a couple of weeks. If you're on information, click on these links. I think Dave has already put it in the chat. If you have any questions for me in the last couple of minutes, I'll be glad to take them. Otherwise, please send me your email. I will answer it as quickly as possible. Remember this, if it's not fact-backed, if it's not based on specific rules, you're not going to make money. Believe me, I've been around for 50 years plus in trading. I know what I'm talking about. So Dave, I'm gonna relinquish the rest of my time to the next trader, to the next speaker. I wanna thank you for giving me the opportunity to be here. It's been great and I hope you do it again.